Hey guys. Uh, my name is Brendan Lim. I'm going to be talking about mobile for Rails application. Um, it's just a, a quick general overview of uh, different ways and uh, you can use different tools to uh, bring your app to the mobile screens. So. Uh, I work for Intuity as well, uh, just like for me. Uh, he kind of went over everything and services and stuff like that. So, so why should you care about mobile? Um, there's an estimated 2.9 uh, billion mobile users in the world. Uh, that number is actually expected to double uh, by 2000, 2011. And over 255 million uh, mobile users are in the U.S. alone. And that's about 85% of the U.S. population. And also in developing nations, it's important to note that um, a mobile phone is sometimes the only way to connect to the internet. So you kind of want to make sure that you, uh, you can reach these people. So here's some mobile stats. Uh, I kind of just want to use this cool little graph right here from Kino. But, uh, so you can see, um, close to 7 billion uh, world population, mobile, us mobile users uh, 2.9 billion, and those with mobile web access about 1.3 billion. Uh, I think that's, it's, it's gone a little further up since, because uh, these stats are from uh, late 2008. So. Um, but the question here is, how do we actually take advantage of this? How do we actually make it so that uh, people can actually read your application and interact with it in different ways, uh, as long as they have a mobile device and some sort of internet connection? So you're going to want to make your application accessible by the majority of web-enabled uh, mobile devices out there. Um, I say web-enabled because um, I'm talking about a lot of uh, the, the new phones that are coming out that can actually uh, view HTML. Um, and access uh, HTTP and are not just limited to Flap. So you can also keep users engaged through SMS, MMS, and email. Uh, there's a lot of apps out there that only like post updates, uh, photos, things like that. Through MMS, SMS, email, all that stuff. So um, that's also important to note that in a lot of foreign countries, you actually use SMS more than actual voice. So it's a, it's a good, easy thing to leverage. So many mobile devices can access the real web. Uh, like I mentioned before, um, I'm going to be talking about uh, devices that can actually hit HTTP and aren't limited to, to web pages, um, like that Nokia over there. Uh, so you can see iPhones on the Google's page and uh, the Blackberry on Twitter. So OneWeb. Uh, OneWeb is essentially trying to make the same information and services available. Uh, to all users, regardless of what device they're using. Um, it's a pretty tough thing to do, because there's a lot of factors uh, you have to deal with. Some problems with OneWeb. Uh, first off, resolution. There's a lot of different phones out there, as we know, different screen resolution sizes. You want to make sure that uh, everything fits properly for each device. At least try your best to do that. Um, JavaScript and Flash, not all phones support that. Uh, connection speed. Uh, processor speed, you want to make sure that you keep your, uh, um, the amount of things that uh, the device has to load to a minimum. So here's a plug on the road uh, called Mobile Foo. Uh, what it does, it can detect if users on a, on a mobile device. Um, it gives you the ability to add custom styling based on the actual device, uh, based on the user. And it gives you some other tools to just make the concept of one uh, web a lot easier to tackle. How does one master mobile food? Not like that, although I think that's a really cool alternative. So it's really simple. All you have to do is just add a has mobile food in your application controller. Uh, just that one line to get you started. So here's a little example. Uh, here you can see Safari is uh, doing just regular uh, HTML formatted uh, login page whereas the iPhone's uh, doing the mobile template uh, made specifically for the iPhone. So what's actually going on here is, um, so MobileFoo's gonna um, check uh, the request header and say, okay, wait, this iPhone uh, the user agent has mobile webkit in it. Uh, let's set this format to mobile. Um, and uh, with that, you're gonna need to actually create these separate views. 
Uh, so you're going to need uh, a mobile layout and just the mobile view there for the session. So there's some extra helpers in mobile foo, uh, like this one right here allows you to uh, just um, show the uh, XHTML doc, doc type. Uh, it's important to do this because in some phones, um, specifically the iPhone, if you, don't, if you don't do this, sometimes the phone, uh, the page will actually appear zoomed out. Uh, so, and it's also good to have valid XHTML. So that's actually what it spins out. And the link down there, you should check it out. There's uh, um, it's a comparison that shows you all the different uh, tags that are supported by all the different uh, XHTML doc types. So uh, some other little class methods that are in there uh, is mobile device which checks to see if it returns true or false whether or not uh, the device viewing it is a mobile device. You can actually check for a, sp uh, a specific device. Um, so this is good here, like some libraries don't support JavaScript, things like that. So. And you can also check to see if you're currently in uh, mobile view and the request format is mobile. So right here, uh, mobile foo actually uses a modified version of browser eyes files, uh, which is written by uh, Michael Bly. He's actually uh, an Intrudy employee as well. Um, so this is your master style sheet foo. Um, on your iPhone and Android, it'll actually be, uh, it'll look for foo mobile web kit. And if it's there, it'll load that and you can add your overrides to that to make custom interfaces for uh, mobile web kit. BlackBerry is, of course, BlackBerry and on this mobile is uh, Mobile Explorer. So to actually change this, I didn't actually make it uh, all that customizable. You can actually go in the code and add some moves yourself. So uh, that's something I'm definitely going to have to do pretty soon. So you can see uh, presently on BlackBerry and presently on uh, the iPhone. So <coughs> and that's just from those uh, styling specific changes, since they're both actually going to be the same page. So what about leveraging other mobile technologies? Um, first of all, there's SMS. We all know about SMS, short message service. So how do we actually keep users informed with SMS? Um, well, first off, they're normally read by about 94% of the recipients. Uh, they're supported by most of the phones out there. So if you don't have one that supports SMS, you've probably got a really old phone. Um, it's good for quick notifications. I say quick because it's generally limited to 160 characters, and it's actually really easy to leverage. So what tools can we use to send SMS messages from our Rails app? First off, uh, Click and Tell is a, is a pretty popular SMS gateway. Um, it's a paid solution, and it uses Click and Tell's API, and last time I checked, it was about four cents per text message uh, within the US, and they support a lot of different countries, um, and you actually don't need to know the recipient's carrier, which is uh, quite, a, quite a nice thing you'll see later on. So here's a little quick example, the quickest example of how to use Click and Tell. So uh, you can go ahead and authenticate, then you go ahead and fire out the message right there with the phone number and your message. So here's another point in a row called SMS Foo. Um, it doesn't cost anything, uh, mainly because it just uses Action Mailer to uh, to send a text message, so it's actually sending an SMS as an email. Um, the one thing is you actually do need to know the recipient's carrier. Um, I kind of looked into that trying to figure out a way to actually pull the, uh, the carrier without having that specified, but you know, there's no reportability and all those things now, so you can't really just go by the phone number. Um, but I'm pretty sure there's a solution out there somewhere. Um, and uh, yeah, not as many supported carriers as Click and Tell. But the good thing is that it's, it's Easily customizable, you can easily add on new carriers. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. But first off, you add free, and how does it work? So here, uh, you know the person's phone number, and you know their carrier. So uh, right there, the phone number 505 8675 You put that in front, and the domain <laughs> for Verizon's SMS or text messages is just vtext.com. So. All you have to do is just put half SMS foo in one of your controllers and uh, fire off, deliver SMS, phone number, carrier, and your message. Um, and it's actually good to, to queue this up or something since it actually will uh, block your browser request, since it is actually just uh, sending out an email. 
So here are some SMS food carriers. Um, this is just a small list. There's actually uh, quite a few more, and it's, there's a lot of international carriers that are supported, things like that. Um, so, and here's uh, an example of how to actually add your own carrier. So, say we want to go ahead and add uh, Ruby Mobile. Um, we just open up uh, SMS Food and Gamma. Uh, under carriers, we just add Ruby Mobile, the name, so it'll be uh, all nice and pretty in a select box that we can display and uh, special domain value right there. So after you have that, all you have to do is just our deliver SMS, number, Ruby Mobile, and your message. So I get those free for you. Make sure that you let your users know that actually it could cost them money. Uh, I actually found this on Twitter. It was like uh, called Twitter gone bad or something. So I think I didn't have a moment with that, so it was pretty bad. So uh, another one is MMS. Uh, it stands for Multimedia Message Service. Um, MMS, you can send photos, video, audio, all types of media. Um, and it's most commonly used for photos, though. Uh, the attachment size is generally limited uh, based on the actual device itself. And it's multi-part line, so it's just an email. And we can treat it the exact same way. Um, the main problem though with dealing with uh, MMS is that you end up with a lot of crap. Um, so you see right here, this is one from Sprint. Uh, you've got a Sprint logo up top, uh, whatever <laughs> message there, and stuff like that. But you actually kind of want that camera right there and that little message in that little box. So the problem is if we were to parse this out ourselves, for all these different carriers, it would just be a big pain in the butt. So, um, there's some tools that can actually help us with that. I'll go into that a little after this. So how do you receive SMS or MMS from my Rails app? Um, first off, I thought I mentioned short posts. I actually um, haven't really messed with that much, and uh, mainly because it's uh, pretty expensive. Um, there's special numbers that you know uh, can be used to receive SMS or MMS messages from mobile phones. You've probably seen a lot of ads like, oh, get free ringtones or jokes every day. The one and that, something like that, two, four, one, whatever. whatever. Um, but yeah, those are short codes. Uh, also referred to as short numbers. MMS support added uh, this year. Uh, it's pretty expensive. Uh, monthly fees can get to a thousand bucks a month. Set up fees close to five thousand. And uh, many companies actually share short codes, uh, mainly because of the cost. So how that works is um, they each have the same short code, but uh, they they each have their own unique keyword or identifier uh, that the users would have to um, prepend their messages. And um, I know there's actually a free solution out there. I know it's, uh, I think it's ad, um, it displays ads and things like that. Uh, first, I think it's uh, text marks. I haven't had a chance to code it yet, uh, but it's worth looking into. So receiving SMS or MMS as an email is another solution, and it's free and uh, relatively simple. Like with uh, SMS Foo, so if you were to actually um, send them an SMS, um, you can actually specify your phone address. And uh, if you were to just have them reply directly back to that, we can receive that and uh, uh, parse out what they want to send in. So one gem that I really love is MMS2R. Uh, it removes carrier advertising, uh, the default text that you saw, uh, decodes and extracts intended files, uh, from the most part of my email, and uh, many carriers are actually supported. So here you can see um, Flynn, we're actually making a new MMS to our object, and uh, this one right here actually just retrieves all the media files from the MMS. Uh, the really cool thing um, the MMS to our can do, though, is actually retrieve the intended attachment that the user actually wanted to send. Uh, that here's the example would be the cat. So, uh, and as for the message, uh, you can the body, you'll actually get the intended body. So it's really, really, really helpful. So this right here, I'm sorry for throwing a big bunch of code up there, but um, it's a really simple, like dead simple, dirty way to um, actually retrieve uh, another mask or something like that that someone sends to your application. Uh, through Action Mailer, I'll go through it. Um, so in this example, I'm actually pretending that hey, this is like a, a site like Tumblr or something where 
where someone uh, can send you an email and uh, we're actually getting the user based on their, their from address. And we're taking that, that email, stripping out the message, uh, the subject, and uh, uh, the attachment they sent, and actually storing that in like a, a blog post or something. So, so first off, we're going to go ahead and throw that email object in there and actually get an MMS to our uh, media object. Um, from there, we are going to find the user based on their from address. Uh, so hopefully they're sending from the same email, but let's assume that they are for this example. Um, so right here, we're just creating a new blog post. Um, the body of it's going to be the body that MMS Tor wrote out uh, from the MMS. Uh, the title, we'll go ahead and make that the subject. And MMS Tor will actually rip out the, uh, the default carrier uh, subjects as well. So, so here we're actually grabbing the, uh, the, the actual intended attachment. Um, then with that attachment, say we're using like attachment to your paper clip, um, and uh, we're going ahead and creating a blog photo if it's an image. So, and lastly, we want to go ahead and purge uh, all the temporary files used for uh, the text and attachments. So actually adding new templates for carriers is easy for MMS 2R. Uh, all these templates, there's a bunch of them from all these different supported carriers. Uh, you can see right there, you can see this is for Helio. Uh, what images that it should ignore, uh, what HTML should ignore, and what text to actually extract from the message that would actually be the, uh, uh, the intended body. So mobilizing a Rails app is really simple. It's easy. There's a lot of tools out there. I only skimmed through a couple of them. Um, you know, there's stuff like Rails IUI that you can use. You can actually use that with mobile to be great. Custom Rails application uh, interface while doing stuff for BlackBerry and things like that. Um, so this is where you can grab everything: mobile foo, click and tell, SMS foo, MS two R, fork it, mess with it, make it better. Uh, and I've actually got a lot of time remaining. So you guys have any questions? Is your session cookie based? Is your session cookie based? Uh, within mobile food? Yes, there is. Uh, are there a lot of support cookies? How do you handle that? Um, well, I actually haven't looked into that. It's not, if you want, you can fork it and help me out with that. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, cool. Thank you, guys.